Welcome to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain, and my guest today is a local artist by the name of Steve Bullock. So make sure you tune in where we explore and look at some of his unique artwork. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DB, DJ Rain, and we're sitting here with Steve Bullock, a local artist from around town. Steve, how are you doing today? Doing great. Well, tell us, before we get in talking about your art and stuff, tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, originally born in St. Louis, Missouri, moved down at an early age to Jackson, Mississippi, and lived there basically most of my life, and um, went to Jackson Public Schools, uh, went to... Uh, Callaway and graduated there, went to Mississippi State, uh, got a, a bachelor's degree in business administration. After that, I stuck around and got my MBA. Uh, after that, I went to uh, work at an accounting firm where I met my wife, as you know, Sherry, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where we met. And I left there after a couple years and went to work downtown at a bank uh, in commercial lending. At, I was a credit analyst. Mm -hmm. and worked there for a couple of years and wasn't crazy about wearing the suit and tie thing. Right. And I uh, went to work at a trucking company, a family-owned small trucking company, and it was very homely, and I, I enjoyed it. And I uh, worked there for about 14 years until the economy kind of turned south, and mm -hmm. that's another story. But, right. Um, anyway, that's... I think we all experienced that. We've <laughs> all experienced that. It's tough times on everybody, but... Uh, I've got four kids, two grown kids, mm -hmm. two in Brandon Public Schools right now, and that's, okay. that's the basics, the high points. Now, you know, we're here to talk about your art, um, and before, you know, we get into more about that, you know, do you have any formal training um, in art? The, the only training that I have is the, actually was pretty good um, art training in uh, public schools in mm -hmm. Jackson. I had some two really good teachers at uh, Callaway. Mm -hmm. uh, one guy's name was Mr. Fox. I don't remember his, la his first name, but excellent art teacher. And uh, another lady named Teresa Reese. Mm -hmm. And they taught the basics, the painting, the different mediums. It was very educational. I learned a lot. Very much a uh, positive influence on my art career. Now, you know, a lot of us ta have taken art in school. Um, but haven't really pursued the art thing. Um, what made you, what sparked that interest in it? Do you have like other artists in your family? Yes, uh, my dad is a, he's a very, he's actually a much better artist than me, a natural artist. He, mm. he just flows out naturally. I have to make mine, I have to, I have to work out a little bit. And his mom is a, an artist mm. and her sister is a, a pretty well-known local artist, a very good uh, acrylic painting or oil painting artist. And what, so, what's her name? Bowie Bowden. Bowie Bowden, okay. Yeah, she's got a lot of work at different places. So the, um, so the, the art thing is kind of, it's kind of like in the blood, in the family. It's in the blood. My kid, my little kid, all my mm -hmm. kids have the, the so, art bug. So when did, you, when did you actually start like doing, you know, doing art besides like what you learned in school, like really kind of, you know, just putting your like full effort into it and, and, and creating these things that you, that you have? Uh, I would say it, uh, probably a couple years ago mm -hmm. when, when the, the job thing started turning south, I was looking at other options and trying to um, <clears throat> uh, have something to relax and get away from the stress and tension of the, the uh, economy and the job. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I got laid off, it uh, gave me an opportunity to clear my head and get away from the rat race. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of a light turned on. Right. on. It just popped on and ideas just started flowing. And I filled up sketchbook after sketchbook like I've never done before. Previously, I was just maybe one or two, maybe a handful of pieces of art in a year. But mm -hmm. it just started, you know, I just filled up notebook after notebook. So, I mean, I have to ask, you know, because I've seen I've seen your work and as, as you have a lot of talent with it, you know, it's really really amazing pieces that I've seen. Why the 
the business degree and nothing with you know no art degree well as a child i i was always told uh you can't make a living as an artist mm -hmm. you can't make a living as an artist you, it's fun don't you know just a pipe dream so i guess i started believing it and i didn't even try i didn't even think about it i didn't pursue it and 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 there may be some truth to that statement it's hard to make a living as an artist mm -hmm. but um I just, I just gave up on it because of everything that I was told <laughs> as a child. So the, the business degree was more of a, I felt like I could get more of a secure, solid, steady mm -hmm. job with a business degree. And when I got out and got my bachelor's degree, the economy was suffering then. So I just stuck around and got my master's degree, got an MBA, mm -hmm. which actually helped. Right. Um, it, gives you a little notch above the, mm -hmm. just a bachelor's degree. So. Tell me about um, like some of your favorite medium to work on. Um, I love pencil. I like working with watercolors and paints, acrylics, but um, I, even, I really like working with black ink. Mm -hmm. But I've started using the wood to do something different. Um, I wasn't super great at any of the other mediums and Nobody was doing the wood like I, I'm doing it, so I figured that would be something I could use to stand out and differentiate myself. Right. Um, so that's. So and you, and you said the uh, you said the you said the girls are um, like they have the art bug. Are they are they painting? Are they you know doing things similar to you? Yeah, they're they're they get when of course when I'm doing it, have all my stuff set up. They see and then they start uh, maybe looking on Pinterest for some art ideas that they can work on at their level because um, you know they can't use the saws and right. this that and the other so they find stuff that they can do so yeah, it motivates them and of course when I see them doing some projects it, it inspires me and motivates me so it's kind of a two-way street right and it, we, we, we both help each other though. so what, what exactly do they do they think as far as you know dad being an art artist versus you know like the the nine to five that you used to have before well, it's kind of a funny story. They, you know, they could tell when I was having tough times at work and struggling and not knowing if the job was going to be around. They said, "Dad, you just need to be an artist. You just need to be an artist." And I was like, "Well, tell them what my dad and what people told me. Well, you can't make a living being an artist." Dad, yes, you can. You're good. I said, "No, I'm not that good. I'm not good enough." Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And of course, you know, here I am making money mm -hmm. doing it, and and it just it chokes me up every time I think about how much they believed in me when, right. when I really didn't believe in myself. But, right. So they've, they've been a definite supporter of mine and well, a positive I mean, influence. Once, once you get famous, those are the ones <laughs> you have to thank for it. That's right. They, they were critical in the process. Well, we're running out of time, so we're going to take a small break. We'll be right back with Steve Bullock. Today's guest is Steve Bullock. For more inquiries, email Steve at stephen.lewis.b at gmail.com or log on to Facebook fan page and type in Stephen Bullock Artwork. Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Thanks to House of Pain for their assistance. Death Tell DJs. Death Tell DJs. 
Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Welcome back to Exposure TV. We're sitting here with Steve Bullock, and we were just talking about um, the girls and, and how much they've supported you and, um, and believed in you and got you started back um, really pushing yourself to be an artist. Uh, tell me about like some of the some of your favorite subjects that you that you like to center your pieces around because I know I know so there's like a lot of wildlife um, and animals in in some of the some of the pieces that you've done. Uh, yeah, I love wildlife. Anything to do with nature, I love being outdoors. Uh, mm -hmm. Dogs, deer, uh, powerful looking creatures, uh, fish. I really like fish because there's lots of lines, lots mm -hmm. of flowing. Um, I just love being outside, so anything to do with, with nature and wildlife. I also like hand gestures, uh, you know, the simple rock on or mm -hmm. peace or thumbs up, whatever. Just Not any the other one. <laughs> no, no, I haven't done that one yet. <laughs> I don't think I'll do that one. But, uh, you know, hands are powerful. They make powerful statements. Right. And I like that. Um, uh, I like to do things that express powerful emotions or mm -hmm. powerful movements. Mm -hmm. um, I have one of a of a, um, a knight kneeling, I call it the humble black knight, um, mm -hmm. just, you know, just I saw showing that one. humbleness. It was really yeah. neat. But, uh, just anything that shows an emotion or, you know, mm -hmm. if I can try to work that into the wood, I do it. But I really like doing the outdoor stuff. That's where I thrive. And I think that lends itself to the wood with the kind of rustic look of the wood, the mm -hmm. unpolished, something that would be great in a cabin or, um, you know, in office, you know. So what, like, what, what type of wood do you actually work on? Is it different types? Do you have a particular preference? I, I work with cedar. I re actually, I use cedar fence boards like you would buy at Lowe's mm -hmm. or Home Depot. And I use the cedar because it has great grain, great color, mm -hmm. and it's light. If I tried to work with oak, oak is so dense, it's, it's heavy, it would probably pull the wall down, some of the 60 by 50 pieces that I do. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it, the cedar is great. It has a very light uh, weight, and it's it's easy to work with, easy to cut, and I, I love the grain on it. Plus, the smell is a bonus when I'm cutting it. Mm -hmm. My little shop just smells like, you know, like cedar. So. so is that is that something you research on the wood, or just kind of new? You know, this this is the one I'm gonna work with. I just playing around, experimentation, mm -hmm. really. I got you. And. Um, you know, we could I could go into the process if you would like to. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. We, I do really want to know how you take something that's flat and nothing and turn it into what I've seen because it, it, it seems like it's a long process. <laughs> it, it can be. It can. On some of the more detailed pieces, it can be very long. I, I take a sketch. Mm -hmm. First, I'll just draw it like it would be in a picture, like you would see, like a photograph would take. I sketch. You know, I might have to research it. I might go outside and look at it or whatever, but I, I'll sketch it into a drawing. Then I will turn that drawing into um, the, the pieces, almost like a puzzle that it can be cut out of wood. And some drawings you can't do. They, won't, they don't lend themselves to putting the puzzle together type of stuff that I do. But um, that's the next step is I turn it into little pieces. And that, that takes a long time, actually. And that's probably one of the creative sides of it, trying to figure out how to make it work. So uh, during that process, when you're trying to, trying to cut these pieces to make sure that they fit like how do you figure that out like I like I, I, d I can't comprehend it so well it, what, what I do is after I get the drawing done I have a projector that I can you, you set the projector on top of the drawing and it projects it up on the wall mm -hmm. as big as I want it mm -hmm. and then I take my wood and I put it on the wall and I trace um, the drawing onto the wood that piece uh -huh. and then after I get all the pieces there may be a hundred pieces I uh, take it and get the jigsaw out and cut them out mm -hmm. that's the next step in the process I cut all the pieces out um, sand them and there's a lot of shaping in sanding when I when I cut it out it, it may not fit exactly so I have to do some sh shaping and some tweaking and uh, the sanding is the next part. That sanding probably takes the most time. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants a piece finely sanded like this would, then it, it's a lot more involved, takes right. a lot more time. But I kind of like the rough look and save people a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. But the sanding is the next step. After I get it sanded, then I do the staining. And I break it out into little piles of 
what needs to be this color, what needs to be that color, what needs to be this color, and I stain all the light color pieces at the same time. Then after I get through with the staining process, um, I'll make the background, which is just like basically like a, a fence. Mm -hmm. I put all the pieces together, put a board behind it, screw them to the board, glue them to the board, and then I stain that. Mm -hmm. And then I have to lay the pieces out on the board to look like the drawing. Now this is the part that where you can mess a, one up or not. So it right. takes a while. Sometimes I get it right on the first laying out. Sometimes it takes a couple of hours to get it just right. Mm -hmm. And uh, with technology, I use my cell phone. I stand above it, take two or three pictures, and you can look at it on the cell phone in a smaller view and see, no, that needs, this piece needs to be over here or that piece needs to be over there. So I tweak it like that until I finally get it to where it looks exactly like the drawing. Mm -hmm. Then I come in with some construction adhesive and glue the pieces to the backboard that I made. And, you know, there's some fine tuning so, in So, like I've, like I said, I've never, you know, I don't see art like that all the time. And, you know, there seems to be like a lot of different, you know, steps to it. Where did you actually, you know, come up with the idea on doing art like, like that? Well, it's interesting. That's a good question. Um, I, I wanted some art for my back patio mm. and I was looking on the internet to buy something kind of a tropical theme and everything that I found the size that I wanted was just you know two and three thousand dollars and I said I've got to be able to make something you know a whole lot cheaper for my purposes I started to do metal I wanted to get into doing metal art but the price of the materials was too high the raw materials and I said well I can work with wood mm. so it kind of, you know, I, I wanted something and I figured out a way to make it for myself. Mm -hmm. People saw it, said, oh, can you make me one? <clears throat> can you, and then their friend said, can you make me one? And it's kind of grown. Right. And through Facebook and other sharing activities, it's just taken off. But right. Yeah, it's, it, <clears throat> I, the first time I ever saw one, I, I kind of want like, how, how did that even come to be? You know, because it's, I saw the fish, I mean, the, I mean, was, it, was the fish piece, was it difficult? Um, which, which fish? The, um, oh, the redfish or the <coughs> yes, one of the outdoor fishes? I think it's the redfish. Yeah, that one took a lot of time because actually um, people think it's easier if I do a smaller piece, mm -hmm. but it's actually harder because you're working with smaller pieces and it's, you know, it's kind of like a computer. It's harder to make a smaller computer than a bigger one. So it's it's more difficult, but yeah, that was a difficult piece. So how long would how long do you would you say like average size average piece um, would take you to complete from beginning to end? Uh, the average piece, maybe about forty by forty or fifty by fifty, could take me up to twenty hours to finish it, depending on how detailed it is. Really? Yeah, I mean, there, it's in stages. Like one day you're cutting and sanding. And you got a stain. Well, you got to let the stain dry. Mm -hmm. Then the next day, you might glue. Um, so it's it's it, it takes several days to do it. But if you put it all together from one end to the other, it would be you know it could take anywhere from ten to twenty hours, depending on how detailed the piece is. So how many how many do you, can you say that you've done so far? Average. How many pieces total? Mm -hmm. Like this, maybe fifty. Fifty. Maybe. That's a lot of man hours. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I've got a lot of sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Sherry likes that. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. I have to clean the house and do the vacuuming and keep the driveway cleaned out, which is my shop. So. Well, we're going to take another small break, and we're going to be right back. We're going to display some of Steve's amazing art, uh, so make sure you stay tuned. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pet Network. Violator All-Star DJs. Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Today's guest is Steve Bullock, Poor Moy and 
inquiries, email Steve at stephen.lewis.b at gmail.com or log on to Facebook fan page and type in Stephen Bullock Artwork. Thanks to House of Pain for their assistance. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DB DJ Rain, and we're sitting here with Steve Bullock talking about some of his unique art. Um, Steve, you know, we talked about, um, you know, we talked about the family, you know, the support you got from the girls. Uh, talked about the process of the art. Um, you know, going from like the nine to five job to, to being an artist, like I know like around our house, like it's, you know, we have to adjust our schedules and, you know, kind of, there's a lot of compromise and stuff, but, you know, has it been a big adjustment for you around the house? It, it has. I, I've been able to, you know, I feel like be more involved with the family, get me more involved with the girls, and mm -hmm. I've been able to help my wife a little bit more around the house. Um, when there's an errand to be run, I have to do it, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I don't mind doing. Um, but it's it's been a different, you know, it's, it's been different from when you're working eight to five. You feel like you come home, you can just take a break. Well, you know, I I work, get up in the morning, and I work until I have to go get the girls from school and come home and help them do their homework. Mm -hmm. Kind of take a break from my work, right? And get them to gymnastics and. And then when I get home, I might go back outside at 8 o'clock and be in the garage working until midnight. Right. So it's a different, you really never stop working when you're working for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have kids at home that have to. Yeah, uh, it, it is a nonstop thing. Um, <clears throat> now, you know, we talked off camera about, you know, for so long, you know, you kind of kept the art thing to yourself. Um, you know, it was your own sketchbooks that you had. And it really didn't put it out to anybody, really didn't show it to anyone, you know, what, what kind of made you put it out to the public? Because I know, I know, you know, when you put a product out or you put art out, something that, especially something that's an expression of, of you, you know, you kind of put yourself out there for judgment or praise, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Right. So it's kind of a big, you know, it's kind of a big leap. So, you know, what, what made you do that? Well, like you said, when I was, you know, young all the way up until a couple of years ago I did art and I kept it to myself and I, I never felt that it was worthy of mm. you know giving to anybody or selling and a lot of it I threw away because I just I, I overly critical of myself and one day I had my sketchbook pile somewhere in my grandmother my dad's mom found it and started going through it and she was just blown away and you know she's almost 90 years old and she she looked at me and said don't you hide this from the world and she she basically made me promise that I wouldn't hide it mm -hmm. and that I would share it with people so that's why I'm here and that's what I'm doing and it kind of changed my focus I've always been real uh, I guess shy about sharing and like you said you put it out there and mm -hmm. you're always kind of fearful of well somebody may not like it but you know you just get to the point where I'm just here it is right deal with it I mean, some people, you know, some people like it, some people don't. I mean, right. Yeah. And that's with anything. But it, it is kind of a, you know, kind of a shocking, you know, to, all right, here it is, you know, let me bear my soul to right. the public. Yeah, and it's different. And when you do, you're working with something that's radically different than a lot of things, there's going to be people that don't like it. Mm -hmm. There are people that probably don't call what I do art. And right. that's their opinion. 
and there are people that do like it. But there's a group of people that like what I do, and I'm catering to those people. Well, that's business. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, so, you know, we've been talking about this art, this whole interview. So let's take a look at a piece that you that you brought with you okay. to kind of give people an idea of what, you know, what you're doing. This is one of my smaller pieces, and so I could fit it in the car. But mm -hmm. you know, these are the little pieces that I that I cut out in sand. Of course, this is the back, the background, and um, this was this started off as a drawing in a sketchbook. This was just something that I wanted to do, just a geometric starburst, mm -hmm. and um, I made it happen. I turned it into something that looks great on my wall. It looked great on your wall. It looked great on somebody's wall, and. Um, just kind of a neat little, this one was, there's not a lot of curves, usually I like to work with curves and mm -hmm. smooth natural lines, but um, I just like the star look, the, the star. Now the, the background that you have that on, it, it, is, that, is that painted? It's, it's all stained cedar, so this is a, what they call an ebony stain, and um, this was some type of a pine, I'm not sure, I can't remember, it might be a natural, this might be a natural color, but basically I just use stain you buy it, mm -hmm. a Minwax stain that you buy at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. And very, very, very nice. But it's just now, I know, I know that you, um, you've, you've already had a, an art show that you've been in. Uh, tell me about that experience. Yeah, that, I had an art show last uh, November, and it was my first time, and like it was the first time that I put it out there, and I didn't know what the reaction would be, and I got a real positive reaction, overwhelming, mm -hmm. and that that was another step in my going forward with right. what I'm doing. Is people, you know, people liked it, and people were saying, "Can you do this? Can you make me one of these? Can you?" And it kind of went on from there. So it was, it's nice getting positive feedback. Right. You know, and I, you know, a couple of people that say, well, "Hey, have you ever thought about maybe doing it this way?" And I've got some, some time-saving ideas from a couple of people that I talked to. Mm -hmm. But it was a real positive experience. So what? As far as an artist goes, what do you think is like the biggest thing that you took from that event that will propel you forward as an artist? Is um, it the experience? Like, the, like, are you, do you have plans on doing like a lot more art shows, or, are you, or do you plan on just selling it through like the the, media, the social media market? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, you asked me what the biggest thing I got out of it. I've mm. always struggled with self confidence mm. and. You know, doubting myself, and and I think going from forward from there, I felt like I am relevant, mm -hmm. and and I this is art, and people do appreciate it. So right. that was the biggest uh, thing that I got out of it. Um, that's probably that's probably like probably the most important thing too. Yeah, especially doing doing you know entertainment or art or whatever. You know that that confidence. You know to once you make that first step yourself, and then people accept it and you understand all right well yeah like I am I am I am an artist right. you know? so that it was sort of a confirmation for me that I needed mm -hmm. and um, but yeah I, li I like the show experience and I'm pursuing other shows I've got another show coming up and it's actually a festival in Yazoo City on September the 8th September the 8th it's called Fire and Feast mm -hmm. and um, it's going to be very interesting nice um, so we're running out of time, um, but we do want to give out your contact information in case somebody would like to look at some of your art. Uh, I think keeps going off. Um, if they want to look at some of your art um, and contact you to, for pieces, where can they contact you at? Um, I, my email address is stephen.lewis.b at gmail.com. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-N dot L-E-W-I-S dot B as in boy at gmail.com and I also have a fan page on Facebook it's Stephen Bullock Artwork S-T-E-P-H-E-N-B-U-L-L-O-C-K Artwork Well I appreciate you coming in Steve and make sure that you check Steve's artwork out he has some amazing pieces um, and make sure you like his fan page and hit him up if you need a piece of them and make sure you tune in for the next episode of Exposure TV